Okay, so we have heard from the public today, so we have two recommendations here. The first recommendation is that uh, Council give first, second, and third readings to the proposed Park Dedication Removal and Disposal Bylaw Number 3379-2015 off Graham Avenue to allow, upon adoption of the bylaw, for the disposition of the subject lands. Moved by Councillor Nish. Second by Councillor Moreau. Discussion? Councillor Moreau? Yeah. So uh, this has obviously turned into a, a fairly contentious, contentious issue to, to many. Um, uh, the other day I was talked to a few people outside this uh, city hall here and uh, uh, I wish that the, the, the rest of the Graham Avenue residents actually had a stayed around and, and, and could have been part of this discussion or, or at least heard, heard what I had to say. I, I did listen to them and I wish they could have seen what I did. So on uh, Saturday uh, I chose to spend uh, over nine hours of my day wandering the streets of Graham, Atlin and Bernarsdal. Now I hit 78 houses. Um, of course there was a lot of people that weren't home whether they be on holidays or out for the day I can't imagine why anybody would have, would have been out for the day on Saturday it was horrible um, but what I came up with was uh, I asked people I asked people uh, a couple questions and one was were they for this particular development were they against development were they for the sale of, of this land were they against the sale of this land or were they um, neutral on the on the issue and then I also offered any if they had any questions or if they weren't familiar with the with the what was going on that I could you know if I could answer it I would answer any questions that they had so out of these I, I'm gonna be a little long-winded here because I want to get this information out so that uh, everyone understands what the numbers that I got so as far as this uh, this process. Uh, this process uh, you know may have some flaws uh, but unfortunately we we are only allowed to do uh, what we have to do and I think if we held a referendum I'm pretty sure that the taxpayers would not have been impressed if we spent thirty thousand dollars on a referendum for this. So unfortunately we had to use the other process that was available to us which was the the uh, AAP process. Um, so I did have a few people that were concerned with, uh, you know, basically the process, and I, and I do believe that city staff uh, maybe could have done a little bit more to make sure that people um, understood what they were to do, or 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 even if we had provided more uh, information to to give along with that form, saying this is what it was, or this is the particular area, so that that could have been handed out also. I think that would have been a benefit for all. Um, but just some numbers I'm going to throw out here. So I had uh, 23 people uh, that agreed with the development. I had 20 people that were for the sale of the property. I had seven people that were neutral. I had five people that were against the development and I had six people that were against the selling of the land. So by my numbers, I'm looking at approximately 80% approval, about 20% uh, you know, that, that didn't approve of this. So to me, Mr. Denton came to me and said that I had to do what the people said. So this is why I chose to go walking around for nine hours. Um, there was other comments brought up. Uh, I had one person that was opposed to all development. I had four people that didn't like the price. So I'd like to discuss the price. The price was a, a price that was set by an independent person. I understand that lots of people think this is cheap. Uh, it could be cheap, but you also have to remember that this land is not developable land on its own. Um, if this was a building lot that we could have sold, I guarantee you we would have not sold it for $21,000. Um, so I really would like that to be noted that that price is only because it's an undeveloped, undevelopable piece of land. Um, I had four people that were concerned with height. This is really not the time for the height. Um, if if they chose to come forward with a height variance, that's when that would be discussed, but noted that there was four people. I had two people that were concerned about the process. There again, I've already explained about that. 
I've had I had one person that wanted trees for a buffer, and I had six people that ra raised traffic concerns. Well, traffic concerns uh, are not just localized to Graham Avenue. Traffic concerns are all over this town. Um, uh, you could argue that people drive too fast on any road in this town. Um, I probably did it when I was 16 too. So uh, the last thing I had, uh, I uh, this was the, the, the one that was the most shocking of them all, was I actually had four people that came right out and told me that they signed this document on the AAA process, AAP process because they felt pressure from neighbors. Uh, I actually had one lady say to me, she says, you know, it's like when your friend comes to the door trying to raise money for cancer. It's your neighbor. You you know you have to you have to give them money. So basically, that's how this person felt when they were uh, confronted by a neighbor to sign this document. They felt pressured, and they told me straight out that they were for the development and for selling of the land. So there again, I feel that the process may be a bit flawed. Uh, I feel maybe the information given out could have been a bit better from city staff. Um, but that is basically my overview of Saturday. Now, I do understand that um, I didn't hit everyone, but I do feel I made a, a good effort at trying to talk to as many people as I could. Um, that's really about all I have to say. I mean, I, I, I think, well, oh, sorry, this, me, I think this piece of land is, uh, it, it, it will never, by the city of Prince Rupert, We'll never, we will never be able to afford to develop this piece of land. This land is the side of a cliff. It is not a park in my eyes. It's a drainage right away uh, that was called a park land by by a previous developer uh, 21 years ago. And um, um, to me, it's about generating revenue. Everyone complains about how this town has potholes and how this town has poor pipes, and and it was brought up, someone said, well, why don't you just sell the land to us? Well, if we sell that land to you, it's got very little value, it collects zero taxes. If we do this, if we decide to go ahead with this, excuse me, this would allow approximately six more units to be built to a development. Six more units would generate probably about $30,000 a year in taxes for, for, for from now on. So to me, th that's what it's about. It's about it's about turning a piece of land that is zero generating of any money right now. It does not generate taxes. It does not benefit the community as a whole. Yes, maybe some people decide to climb down the bank. If you want to talk about park liabilities, it's it's a very dangerous place. Uh, if people choose to to go in that area and they fall and hurt themselves, are we liable for that? Because it's our park. I I don't know the answer to that question. But to me, it's about generating taxes. It's about uh, trying to to uh, to maybe use that money that we generate in taxes to fix our water lines, to fix our streets, to to make our other parks better. And that's that is all I have to say now. Councillor Morrow. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I want to echo a couple of the points that Councillor Niche made, but I just want to pick up on the one. Uh, the one point you just made there, I, I, I respectfully disagree on the one point you made about the misinformation, Councillor Niche. I, I don't think the misinformation was coming from staff. I think there was a lot of misinformation that was disseminated throughout the neighbourhood and it was very difficult for us as an institution to confront when, I mean, for example, I, I think everyone knows I was a part of the video production that we did. It was basically a public service announcement to say, please get involved with this process. We want to hear your input. Um, and some of the comments that I that I received, uh, people were were saying things like there was going to be you know 70 additional cars back and forth. Um, I mean the claim that we're losing foreshore access is just simply not true. I mean we're not going to we can't build a staircase to nowhere. There's private land underneath that's owned by CN, it's owned by BC Ferries. I mean the, the, that land is going to continue to be unavailable for public use. So I mean the comparisons to Service Park and to Stanley Park are. I think they're completely ridiculous, quite frankly. I mean, when you look at the map that was up there, and you're talking about a six-meter right-of-way on the face of a cliff, uh, we're not talking about a waterfront park. We are talking about, just as you said, Councillor Nisha, drainage right-of-way. So that's the one thing, I, one point I wanted to make, is there is some misinformation that was out there, and I think it was really unfortunate um, that we were confronted with uh, you know, I really wish, I, I don't know if anyone knows this, but I live in Section 2, and everyone's saying non nobody on Council lives in Section 2. I'm right there. I'm down the street. I had plenty of conversations throughout this process. 
Um, and I, I really just wish that, uh, you know, the neighborhood, when they're calling a public meeting, I, very purposely, you know, I think did not invite me down there. And I, you know, I would have loved to come and provide my input, um, but I don't think that they wanted me there because they understood that I was going to bring a different perspective. So the other uh, uh, points I'd like to make. Um, so first of all, the, the, I think the one concern that Councillor Niche hit on that was raised the most was actually not necessarily opposition to the project, but uh, the the purchase price. Uh, it's been mentioned a few times that it was the appraised value, um, but the one thing I want to add is there's a couple people that made comments in relation to the the land having more value to the developer, and that's absolutely true. That land does have more value, additional value to the de developer than it does compared to the appraised value. But the flaw in that in that rationale is that we charge tax rates based on assessed value. So if we're going to start to set a purchase price uh, based on a number that we're choosing out of the sky because we think the developer can earn a whole bunch more money, I mean it's the same thing as trying to set business tax rates based on a company's bottom line. So it's it the the logic is inherently flawed. Um, the other thing I want to add is comparing the per square foot cost to other waterfront. Uh, or sorry, water view lots. Um, the, the it's it's been mentioned a couple of times already. The, the lot is not the utility of that lot is not. It doesn't warrant comparing to a a building lot. It simply doesn't. It's six meters wide. It's shaped like an L. It's got extremely steep topography, and it's running across a cliff face. So I mean, it's obvious that any appraiser is going to say that you can't have the same square foot. Uh, rate as as any buildable lot, um, and I mean there was a lot of talk about adding value. In particular, um, to me, adding value, I'm I'm looking at how we, as the city of Prince Rupert, can offer more value for our taxpayers, and this project accomplishes that. So, uh, accusing us of selling the fire sailing this land for a tenth of its value is is simply wrong. What we're trying to do here, what we believe is the best interest of the City of Prince Rupert, is if we can get greater utility and a greater assessment base on our tax roll, that's ultimately going to be a lesser tax burden uh, for all the residents in Prince Rupert. So that's my perspective on that. Um, the last thing I want to add, because um, I do think it's a valid point worth addressing, is uh, there's some people who have asked us why the alternative approval process was launched for the entire city and not just for Section 2. Um, and, you know, there's been, uh, you know, some people have been saying if it was just for Section 2, you, we would have gotten the, the percentage amount and everything like that. But what the question I would pose to that person is, if, uh, I mean, Councillor Thorkerson, I think you would remember this from the prior term, but when, when the city was trying to find uh, space for the emergency services building, there was conversation at the time about Moose Top Park because it was, it was a central location. It was big enough to do fire and, uh, and police. If we were going to redesignate Moose Top Park for an emergency services building like it was being discussed at the time, would it be fair to just draw, you know, six city blocks around Moose Top Park for that alternative approval process? and say no one else has a say. I, I think that opening that up to the entire community offers everyone the opportunity to provide input on selling parkland, because I would, I would hate to cut off Graham Avenue residents from p giving us their input if we were going to be uh, redesignating Moose Top Park. So that's the, the uh, basic comments that I have. So I'd, I'd like to hear other councillors' perspective. Councillor Thorkson. Uh, um, again, this is just a procedural question. Are we just now discussing the uh, re park dedication, removal, and uh, uh, disposal, or are we d discussing the sale of the lot? Are we just discussing the rezoning, or are we discussing the sale of the lot? Um, I believe it's just the disposition of the subject lands, and this next, the next motion would be the rest. Right, so so this doesn't mean we have to sell it. If we decided we could remove it from parkland and and just keep it as city-owned property, we could do that even if we pass this bylaw. Is that correct, Mr. Mender? Yes, I, oh, sorry. Yes, but I believe the developer might want to have a say in that just because they've invested a fair bit into this process, so they might want to weigh in. Uh, th the only reason is is because um, uh, Councillor Cunningham and, and and I have have um, both independently came up with the same wonderful idea, 
and and that is to put a covenant on the land and so i don't know if if we need to amend this motion and include the covenant with this motion or whether we just pass this motion and then go on to a motion to sell the land that that's that I, it's just a procedural thing i I'm believe asking. we can do that at the second motion that's correct okay Councilor Cunningham. Okay. I'm still a little uh, opposed to the price we're selling this to, but obviously everyone else thinks it's okay. I uh, still think the uh, there's a value here from the, a buyer value that they want this land and we could have got more for it, but that said, I'll pass on that. I'm not opposed to the project the way it sits right now. If we we are obviously going to take this out of park land and we're going to sell it. This covenant that Joy and I talked about is probably a good covenant. Uh, I think any value that's going to come out of this sale will not come until we have to do some other developments where they might want to go for a variance for height and things like this. Now that's a whole different ball game. I uh, I have no problem, I guess, now, because after talking to everyone and listening to everyone and that, I'm still a little, uh, a little query on the uh, value. I think we should get more for it. I've, uh, I've, I've come across a couple of situations in other places where the assessed value was one thing and what it sold for was three times higher than that because somebody wanted the property, but again, that's it's a democracy as Mr. Moreau likes to say and uh, so I've got no problem with either of them as long as we control the development there. Councillor Renhawa. Thank you Mr. Mayor. Yeah we heard different speakers and we got the concern about traffic, uh, design, sale price and traffic and sewer line. So on the other hand, we have concern about housing and uh, for city property tax. So, but my only concern, uh, concern or I would say a uh, question is like, if we can get second opinion on the sale price, second op uh, appraisal value. I think uh, price is a little bit low and we can get that, then I have no problem with this project. Council Nish. As far as the price is concerned, I think we could sit here for uh, three months and, uh, and, and talk about what we think is the right price and what other people think is the right price and, and we're going to come up with a hundred different uh, results and that's why you hire a professional to do that. Uh, the professional has come in and said that, uh, you know, this is what the land is worth. Uh, you know, I understand that the, when the land is, is uh, eventually uh, attached to this property there is no doubt there is no doubt that it will value that property more but the reason why developers want to do things like this especially in Prince Rupert is because the cost of getting out of the ground is is very costly now um, you know they're they're not just buying it for for twenty one thousand dollars and they're not it's not like they're spending zero and then making more on it I mean they've had to uh, pay for legal fees. They've had to pay for you know. Th there is a process, and and I think that that that's got to be noted that that they have invested time and money into this too. And it's not just about them saying I'm going to buy it today and I'm going to sell it tomorrow. If they do sell this project uh, to somebody else, it, that may be a possibility. And I think uh, with uh, this possible covenant that uh, that Mr. Cunningham and Thorkelson uh, have. Uh, have written up, which I'll leave to them to to read. I think with some adjustments, we can we can uh, we can do something to to stop uh, to stop that. So I I, I do believe that uh, a, a professional was brought in to appraise this property, and I do think that uh, you know that's the reason why they're hired. Um, we could make the argument that it is worth more money. There is no doubt that when it is combined with another property, it is valued more. I, I don't disagree with that. Um, but as it sits right now, we can't sell it as a developable lot. Uh, I mean, if it, if we could sell it to someone to build a house on there, well then, yeah, we'd probably sell it for $200,000 or $250,000. But it's not a developable lot. We have to sell it as 
what it is. It's a, a drainage ditch. And I'll just add quickly here. I uh, met with uh, Graham Avenue residents a couple months ago, and uh, we had a lengthy discussion over a variety of topics, and this topic came up. And at that time, we hadn't made any decisions yet on how we were going to proceed with this process. Um, but that being said, one of the things I communicated to re Graham Avenue residents is that this property, not the one we're selling, the one in front of it, was already rezoned in another process. The property was rezoned and then the owners sold that property to somebody else. One of the concerns I've been hearing is we don't know what's going to be built. The thing is the developers don't have to come back to council to show what they're going to build. As long as it fits within our guidelines, as long as it fits within our permits and the building permits, they can go ahead and build whatever it is they like to build uh, because they already have the zoning that they need and they own the property privately. So even if council decided not to sell this piece of property, the developer as is can build whatever it is they choose to build as long as it fits within our guidelines. And what will happen is that L shape is going to be trapped in front of a development. And so, which will means that the public would then have to access that public piece of property through private property to get to it if they were going to go ahead and walk down the edge of a cliff and play down there. So regardless if this property is sold or not, there will be a private property development in front of that lot and it won't necessarily be accessed and I don't know if I'd have my kids playing near the edge of a cliff. And so that is one of these issues here is that people have to understand is that by selling this, we add additional value to a lot that's going to be trapped and then there would be additional units which then means more tax revenue for the community to do the things we need to do. And so at this moment in time, regardless of the sale or not, the property owners don't have to come to council again with a new development proposal as long as it fits the guidelines. The property is rezoned. There is nothing council, this council can do about that. And unfortunately, the previous owner decided to sell the property from the original proposal. And I've seen it. You know, Mr. Denton showed the card with what it was proposed. And you know what? It's a lovely development. And you know what? I am trying to encourage this developer to continue with that exact one. But it is their private property at, the, at, his, own price, at his own place. It's their right to do that. And we're saying, okay, we will probably work with you if council decides to do that today to get some additional units, to get additional tax revenue in a balanced way that doesn't, I believe, harm the town's interest in terms of public spaces. We just named the Atlin Park, Odd Eidsvik Park, which has lots of area for play and, and room for the residents to, to use. And so it's to say that somehow this L shape is the most prime piece of waterfront property where it's, I've been down there many times now going, even when I was growing up on Graham Avenue, by the way, uh, I never went down there and played, and I don't know why, because it's very dangerous. And so I have to say that, I mean, this is just the reality of the situation, is that unfortunately somebody decided to designate this parkland, and I don't believe it's necessarily a park piece of parkland. Um, so I have to say that. Anyways, any further discussion? Oh, um, just, just, oh, sorry. Just for the people at home, I'd just like those pictures brought up, actually, of of the area, so that the people at home could see what we're talking about here, so they just don't think we are selling a uh, a piece of park land is what I would consider a piece of park land. Okay, Councillor Ranhawa. I, I, I can I can wait for the slide. I it's done. I, I I can talk from the slide. Actually. Oh sure. Yeah. Okay. So what? Sorry, do you want? Like, uh, are you uh, thanks for your comments, right? About the you explain everything, right? And we don't have much. You said like uh, control on the sale. Yeah. But uh, city has control on the sale of the price. I think. And uh, we should get second advice. I, I, I encourage the sure. city to do that. Sure. To get fair p price for our residents. So that's the only my concern. And we'll, do, well, in the second motion where we discuss the price, we can. That's what we want to do. Then we'll do that there. Okay. So, you. is there any further comments? Okay. So the motion's on the floor for the first motion. Any all those in favor? Any opposed? Okay. That motion's carried. Okay, the second motion 
is a recommendation that council receives for information purposes the number of elector responses received in regard to the proposed park dedication removal and de disposal bylaw number 3379 2015 off Graham Avenue is 337 in total and is certified by the city's corporate administrator and that council acknowledges that the city of Prince Rupert has obtained the assent of electors to move forward with the proposed park dedication removal and dispos disposal bylaw number 3379 2015 and that council gives direction to staff to proceed with the sale of the subject lands to the Brighton Group Ocean View Condominiums Limited, and that the land is to be consolidated with the purchaser's adjacent lands in exchange for payment to the city of then the praise value of the subject lands of $21,000 to be dispo deposited by the city into its parkland acquisition reserve fund for future acquisition of parklands. Councillor Cunningham. And I'd like to add a covenant to that if we're going to vote on this. <coughs> and that a covenant be registered on the consolidated property as a condition of sale, having within the covenant the provisions that the construction of the site be completed in full by December 31st, 2018, and at a percentage of not less than 30% of the total number of units be solely dedicated for seniors and provisioned with wheelchair accessibility N, the development permit be obtained by December 31st, 2016, and the construction of the foundation work to be fully completed by de December 31st, 2017. And that should any of these provisions within the, co within the covenant not be met in full within the timelines as specified, the city of Prince Rupert shall have the right to take back the lands previously sold at the rate of the original price less 21st 20% for administration costs. I'm assuming you've submitted that then to the corporate administrator. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just for the record. I, I'd like to offer a friendly amendment and then where, where you read uh, your worship to say that uh, uh, subject lands of $21,000, if we can say subject lands of $21,000 or if a second appraisal gives a higher price, that price. Okay, do you agree with that amendment? Uh, except I don't believe we had uh, your um, additional item motioned. Okay. So that's moved oh, with awesome. a second with the additional. Okay. So if the second appraiser comes in with a higher price, then we will go with that. Okay. Other questions, comments? Uh, the only thing that I would maybe like to, to to change on this, if possible, would be I think the dates are a little bit unrealistic. Uh, I think they should all be moved like one maybe one more year. Uh, to get a development permit by the end of this year is probably being a little bit unrealistic. I mean, these people have a lot of planning to do. So, I mean, I don't know if that would be an option for you, but I would I I would look at it as basically adding one extra year onto each one of your your uh, dates, if that if you would be interested in in that amendment also yeah i I'd, I'd agree to that seconder sure okay so then that would be so we would say then the development permit for december 2017 and then built by um december 2018 correct no. that's what you're saying one year ahead yeah okay that's yeah okay yeah. I've got a few um, few concerns with that that particular covenant. I mean, first of all, a covenant like that fundamentally changes the proposal that's already been negotiated and is on the table. Um, I just have a question in relation to item B that you mentioned, um, Councillor Cunningham, but I think this might be a better question for the corporate administrator. Um, a percentage of not less than 30% of the total number of units be solely dedicated for seniors and provisioned with wheelchair accessibility. Uh, do we only have the power to register that covenant on this small piece of land and not the proposal in general? No, um, through your worship, this would be uh, put onto the consolidated piece of property, okay. so it would be as a whole. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, from my perspective, putting a covenant on it that's that specific um, after we had already had something on the table for a number of months now that had already been agreed to I think it fundamentally changes the proposal and the developers not here to really provide their feedback so all I would add is uh, I mean I'm I'm supportive of a covenant in general because that satisfies a major concern that we've heard 
which is the speculative nature of Prince Rupert real estate right now. Um, but I mean, if we're going to have a covenant on it that the construction of the site be completed by a certain date, I don't think we need to have, you know, the construction of the foundation work be completed by a certain date, the development permit be obtained by a certain date. And I think we could work on good faith with the developer to make sure that this this project actually has a look and feel that we want to see. I don't think we need to just throw in a covenant right at the last minute that fundamentally alters the proposal that's already been agreed to. I just don't think that's a good process. It doesn't provide certainty to anyone that's coming into Prince Rupert to do business. And it, uh, it really, I'm, if I'm the perspective of someone coming in to invest my money in Prince Rupert on the housing development, and I see a council put a covenant on at the very last minute, I'm, I'm going to be concerned rightly about all of my private property in town that if I try to do something that a covenant's going to get put on. So I, I really wish that we had brought this up a lot sooner in the process because I mean again I, I don't fundamentally disagree with putting a covenant on it that we can get we can satisfy the concern of of uh, a speculation by having a date for construction of the site. I don't think we need to prescribe how they have to do their their work. I mean I don't I'm a big believer that private property rights is kind of the the reason that Western society exists the way that it does today, and uh, I mean, I, I just I, I can't support the covenant the way that it's that it's being proposed here. Councilor Sokerson. Well, well, I, I don't mind playing with dates, and I, I and I really don't mind if we if you think if, if council agrees to um, uh, you know to deal with the dates for the development permit and the construction of the foundation work. I, I, I'm I could live if if uh, I'm not a contractor. If that's too restrictive for contractors, and that's too restrictive for contractors, I'm not too worried about private property rights. I think that uh, there's many places in the world which restrict uh, access to private property rights, and and um, and I think if you find out Germany is a democratic state and the 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 um, um, Scandinavian countries are, are democratic states, uh, and uh, I think that um, what we have here is, in my opinion, a park that was not, in my opinion, to be a park. But the people, the residents of the area, feel strongly about this development. It seems to me that they are using the idea of the park. Um, so-called park as um, as a way to try to uh, uh, try to influence the developer into doing what they believe that was promised which was seniors a seniors condo housing unit and and I think that we need to have a seniors con condo unit and I think and I express this many times that that uh, a, seniors, a seniors condo unit on Graham, um, uh, built to good standards, is one of the things that would make our city a better place, and certainly a better place for residents. The concern is is that um, we do not have in place yet our building, uh, our, our changing our building standards, which you, you just talked about, uh, saying you know that that we that we shouldn't deal with a liquor control uh, resolution because we need to put more effort and time into that. And I think that that's correct. We do have to try to get those going in a, in a timely fashion. But, I'm, but I think that when you, when you look at what the residents rightly want is a nice development at the end of Graham that they can all move into. Um, that I think that that and if this is the only way we have to guarantee that so it's not just going to be flipped or it's not just going to be developed in a way that wouldn't be accessible for seniors that that uh, this is the only our only methodology of being able to do so by passing it as taking it out of parkland by putting it into private land owned by the city and then the city selling it and saying if you want this land then you have to develop it by a certain date and it has to be have some units in it 30 percent of the units in it as condo or and senior friendly so we can get in and out of there with wheelchairs as for seniors that's the only right now that is the only tool we have and uh, and I know that uh, it may be disappointing to the developer 
um, that that this is what we want and maybe we should have been better organized a, a year ago to try to get our uh, ourselves more in line but that didn't happen we are where we are now because we were not a council or a city that really uh, was prepared for this kind of development and now we're doing that and so I, I believe this is the only method that we have to be able to control what happens on that land we don't have any other method and maybe Maybe the developer isn't going to like it, but the people on Graham don't like it, the fact that it's, it could go ahead without any controls over it, or it could just sit there and be flipped again and flipped again and flipped again. Some shoddy four-story building or three-story building could go up there, and they would have absolutely nothing uh, by some developer in the future, and we would have you know, no controls over it. And so I think that this is a way to ensure that we try to get something out of this process in the way of, of ensuring that this development is timely and this development is going to have some room for seniors in it. Councillor Nish, then Councillor Murrow. Uh, you know, normally I, 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 I would kind of agree with Councillor Moreau and not uh, have such restrictive covenants on it, but uh, in this situation with, with a, a, that it's involving a, a piece of city-owned land um, that uh, that you know we're selling and and the potential of flipping and the potential of uh, of um, of you know nothing really going on there for ten years. I I am uh, believing that this is the way to go on, on this uh, sale because it's involving a piece of city land. Um, I uh, I totally think that uh, that basically excuse my language, but uh, it's time to shit or get off the pot. Uh, these people need to they need to step up. They need to either start building something or they need to sell the property um, and let somebody else build something. And this is the only way we're going to get something going. Uh, if they choose to flip this property, then the next person will be required to get going on this project right away. And I think this is how we're going to do it. If we're going to sell them this piece of land, this is how we're going to control that. If they choose to go forward with the smaller development, they have every right to do that, and they can start that tomorrow if they want. Councilor Mark? There's a lot of points to respond to there, so I'm going to do my best here. So, uh, Councilor Thorkelson, to your first comment um, about not caring much about private property rights, I, I, sim I, don't, I can't respond to that. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't have a response. But what I do want to say is that when you claim that it's not it's that's the only tool we have I, I fundamentally disagree we have engineering standards and we have planning standards in place already to ensure that buildings are not built as shanties we have building inspectors on staff to make sure that when people build and they take out a permit that they conform to the standards that we got in place All right so I don't think a developer is going to buy a piece of real estate with a water view to build a shanty I don't think that this is the only tool that we have. We do have that degree of control through our planning and engineering standards. Um, and I, you know what, I don't actually disagree that um, you, you made the comment that this park uh, was not originally designed to be a park. I fundamentally agree with that assessment. I think it was just a designation of the, the developer at the time. Regardless, we do have, like, I mean, we've, anyways, sorry, I'll go, I'll go to, uh, Councillor Nisha's comment that um, this is the way to get something going, and um, again, I I think that putting on a series of very restrictive covenants at at the very last minute on a development is not a way to get something going. It's a way of telling people that you know we're going to hear your development through to the end, and then we're going to change it in such a way that we feel we can get what we want out of it. And for me. I mean, I, I, I can't really actually fully articulate myself because if we're not going to respect private property rights as a council, then I don't understand what we're doing here. If we're not going to use our engineering and our planning standards to make sure that development occurs in a way that's actually consistent with our official community plan. So for me, we have those, the, those tools in our toolkit. Um, for me, the way to get something going, again, I'll say it again, I don't fundamentally disagree with putting on a covenant that gets rid of the issue of speculation or flipping, which is to put a date on it. Um, I mean, to be really specific, point A, the construction of the site shall be completed in full by December 31st, and I think we all agreed to push that back a year to 2019. 
to say that much is saying to the developer, look, we're prepared to uh, sell you the property as it is under the impression that you're going to consolidate those lots and build within three years. To me, that's, that's reasonable. And that's saying to someone, I mean, we want your business. We want you here. We want you to build. I think adding something like this, it says the exact opposite, quite frankly. I'll just jump in, actually, one moment, Councillor Kanem. Um, I agree with Councillor Murrow in some respect. I think, I think just saying December 2019 and just leaving it at that would be fair rather than saying you must meet these benchmarks and I think that's fair. However, I do disagree with the point about the seniors housing thing because we still have to balance the fact that there are na na residents there who who understood that originally that this project was going to be a seniors housing development. And at the same time, we've heard tonight that there is still a lot of people there who are concerned about what's going to be built there. And it's not that no one's going to meet the standard of the building code. No one's going to no no one's questioning that. Of course, they're going to meet those standards. It's, but there's nothing in our planning or engineering that's saying you must do some stuff for seniors. And so that is the consistency that we've heard from the neighborhood. And I think we need to ensure that if we're going to go ahead with this, about we don't be too restrictive to the point to say we don't want development because obviously we're all talking that we want this to happen. But I think that we, and I don't see the developer, to be quite frank, after talking with them, seeing this as too much of an issue as it already, I believe, is fitting in line with some of the concept that they were wanting to, to, to be, which is that people could live there. And I think us, our seniors living there, and I think us just saying that 30% of this is going to be seniors friendly and wheelchair accessible, and that you must build by 2019 gives the assurance to those residents who we are also responsible for that that is the direction that this is going to go in. And so I, in that case, I agree with Councillor Thorkos and that this is our only tool to say that that particular piece, the seniors piece, is the only tool we have is in this right now in this moment in the amalgamation of the lot. However, I do agree with you that I don't know if we need to have a, a foundation time, a development permit time. I think we should just amend this motion to say by December 2019, you must build that there must be 30% unit of seniors. I think that's a fair offer. I don't think the developer is going to walk. And if they do, they still own the property and can do a development on that property as it is. And I think we have to satisfy some of the needs of the residents in this particular case. And that's, I'm kind of in that concept and agreeing with the others on that one. Councillor Kenyon. The original intent, intent of the rezoning by the citizens of that area was a senior complex. We are trying to meet part of that original intent. Everyone that spoke tonight, with a few exceptions, was not against the project. They're against what it's going to be. We're putting some of that to rest by putting these conditions on it. The one thing I heard over and over and over again, and I think Councillor Neese said it best, I won't repeat it, but was that we have a developer here that so far has bought stuff and not done anything. And this was one concern a lot of citizens said. Like, what are they going to do this time? And, you know, they've told me they want to build here. Well, then fine. I don't think these, this covenant is that restrictive. If you are a serious developer, then by adding a year to any of this, so you got to have a development permit by December 31st, 2017. That's a year and a half away. You should have your act together by then. I was going to say part of the other phrase, but you know, if you don't have your act together and got a development permit in 18 months on a piece of property that you're putting together, then your intention isn't to develop it. So I think this is all fine and dandy. You know, I'm all for this development as long as some of it's for seniors because that was the original intent of the neighborhood to begin with and that's what they want. Councillor Nish. Councillor. Uh, um, I, I kind of uh, maybe would like to maybe put another uh, amendment to it if possible. Um, maybe we could uh, drop the kind of the best of both worlds here. We could probably drop the foundation one, uh, a, a D, uh, and just give them the the development permit one because the development permit is a is a that's a key piece of of a development happening and if they are going to do something a year and a half is a long time for them to get get this development permit in place and then then we actually know if they're if they're 
going to do something or or, or at least show uh, they're going to spend some money to possibly do uh, studies engineering studies uh, you know and and move forward with something so so if we could amend it so that maybe to kind of uh, satisfy it maybe ease it up a little bit is get rid of D um, and like I said earlier obviously add the one year on the other two then so I don't know if that would be possible to amend that. If the mover and the seconder want to make a friendly amendment. Yeah, I'll make a friendly okay, amendment so to that. To remove D. Okay. Councilor Morrow. I feel like I'm fighting an uphill <laughs> battle, but I'm going to keep going. Um, the point that I'm going to try to make here is that, well, I mean, first of all, um, to try to take this conversation as me not being supportive of seniors housing is 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 just not true. I am I really do want to ensure that there's additional seniors housing in Prince Rupert. I know that the demand is there and I know that the need is there. So I agree with all of you guys on trying to encourage that. But the mechanism to do that is to have our multifamily design guidelines in place as soon as we possibly can. Um, and I, I mentioned that in, in my opposition to working on the one kilometer liquor rule. I think that having multifamily design guidelines in place is much more of a priority for exactly reasons like this. So the question and the main concern that I'm hearing from you guys and from, from uh, citizens tonight is what is the development going to be? What's it going to look like? Really, if we don't have those design guidelines in place, then we, we, we're in a position that we're in right now. We can't answer with any specifics other than to say they're going to use it for additional density and potentially some underground parking. If we had multifamily design guidelines in place, we would not have this issue where people are so um, concerned about some kind of shanty being erected or something like that. I mean, we would have specific standards that every developer would have to adhere to. Um, and the, okay, the only other thing that I'll add is in terms of the timing, um, this is in relation to the covenant. D we're talking about the seriousness of developers. Um, no developer can control the economic circumstances in Prince Rupert. No developer can control the demand for units in Prince Rupert. So if, some if something were to change in three months or four months, if anything changes, I mean, there's no guarantee that they're going to build, anyways. So, to me, I don't, I don't think it's, it's. I mean, you've heard, you've heard my point. I think I've made it. No developer can control the economic circumstances in Prince Rupert. I don't think it's fair to put a covenant on, at the last minute that restricts when and how they should build. And I'll just add to that. I completely agree, Councillor Moreau, about the design guidelines. However, we know that even at the fastest rate, that's still months away. And so unfortunately, there is a moving train. And we're on that moving train and we're building tracks at the same time in front of us. And you know, as in a perfect world, we'd all be able to stop everything, get it all nicely laid out, and then have it all go. But that's not the case here. And I think in this particular circumstance, that we're not being restrictive to this developer in particular, who that this time last year was in this council chamber saying to hurry up to get the Park Avenue development done because they wanted to get moving on that. You know, I think we have to find that balance in the moment as we move ahead. Because I know once we get all these things in place and the design guidelines and all those things in our policies and that every developer that comes is going to have all this certainty and they're going to know what the rules are and it's going to be great. And I don't believe whether or not we have a covenant or not that they're not going to build something nice because there is codes to build. It's, I, I get that. But we have heard from this these residents this I don't see it as them being at all deterred from doing 30% seniors friendly units I don't see that as a huge issue and I don't see a problem of us saying to you know by 2017 have a development permit in place I don't think that's going to stop them from continuing the process to the point where now we have now given them access to a much bigger piece of property and it's going to be a much more comprehensive development which they're going to benefit from and now the residents if we do pass this are going to also feel that security that something along the lines of seniors is going to be incorporated and to give them some assurance which is also part of our responsibility so i totally understand where you're at i totally get it i wish in a perfect world that we had it all in place where we don't have to have to 
to say it like this, but in this particular circumstance, we know through the years that this project has been stressful for this neighborhood, has been worrisome. We've heard them from them tonight. There's a whole bunch of them, and we have that responsibility for them. But we all want development, and we all want to make so, uh, this community make some more money for itself so that we can do other things. And I think there's a that's, this balance is is correct in this particular circumstance. Councillor Cunningham. Okay, we had developer and real estate agents come up here a little while ago and say we need, we've got a real shortage of rentals and condos. We're discussing rentals and condos, whether they're strata titled or rental here. I don't know what the developer's going to do. But we had more than one person come up and say we need that. That need's not going to go away. Major project come or go, it doesn't matter. We've got the port down there that's already said within the next seven years they're going to have 5,000 people working down there. That's going to drive the market just as much as anything else in this town. And I agree 100% with Mayor Brain. The guidelines are not in place. We can't pull them out of the air and say you got to do this. This is the next best thing. So I call the question. Any further discussion though? Okay. Just because they, they want to discuss. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Yeah, like uh, with this motion, I think uh, we can solve the senior housing problem. Lots of people are on waiting list right now for housing. There's no available. And lots of people like to downside their housing. They, they don't have any place to go. I think with this, these guidelines, we can make sure uh, senior housing be met. Yeah, and I'll be in favor of this motion. Okay. Any other further? Uh, I just want to thank Councillor Moreau for bringing up. Uh, it, lots of times, it's really hard to be the only, the odd person out. And uh, you know, I, I, I think that uh, in this case, it's uh, collective rights opposed to private property rights. And to say that we aren't in favor of private property. This is our property. This is the property that belongs to the people of Prince Rupert. And if the neighborhood has described their concerns and we've tried to meet them with this, the, uh, then I think that is collective rights uh, on, a cl on a piece of property we collectively own. And if the builder decides, I mean, the builder came to us asking for this, for this piece of property after the builder had bought, the developer had bought the other piece of property. And so the developer had already gone through a whole proposal, series of proposals saying that they were gonna develop this property. The way, the way it was. And then it came back and said, ah, well, maybe it'd make it a little bit better for me, not for the neighborhood, but for me, if I can buy that piece of property from you. And we said, okay, well, and we had to go through this whole process. And we've gone through this process. And I think that um, we are being as reasonable as we can. We've listened to this. We've listened to the residents. We haven't given them exactly what they wanted, which is which is a, the, to keep the so-called parkway there. But we've listened to the residents and we've tried to meet uh, their concerns while at the same time not making it difficult for the developer to do what he said at the same time. I have only voted positive in all of this stuff because it was supposed to be seniors condos. That's what it was he came here to say. and I. It's not in this notebook, it's in the notebook before this notebook. That's exactly what they, they said. And so this shouldn't be any kind of a, a, a difficult thing to, to live up with this if you really want to develop it. And if you want to flip it, you better flip it fast to somebody else who does want to develop it. But that to get it going and get it going in a state that, that is going to meet the collective wishes of the neighborhood. And yes, that does trump, in my opinion, the collective rights trump the individual rights. But that individual never had any rights to that property in the first place. That was our right to do what we wanted with it. Uh, I'd like Rory to read back the covenant because we've changed this yeah. so many times and I'd like <laughs> to know why Mr. Moreau keeps looking at me when he says senior housing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, and through your worship, uh, that a covenant be registered on the consolidated property as a condition of sale, having within the covenant the provisions that a the construction of the site be completed in full by December thirty first, two thousand nineteen, and b a percentage of not less than thirty percent of the total number of units be solely dedicated for seniors and provisioned with wheelchair accessibility, and c the development permit be obtained by December thirty first, two thousand seventeen 
and that should any of the provisions within the covenant not be met in full within the timelines as specified that the city of Prince Rupert shall have the right to take back the lands previously sold at a rate of the original sale price less 20% for administration costs. And also the uh, the um, appraised value. Correct. As well. Sorry. Uh, that council give direction to staff to proceed with the sale of the subject lands to the Brighton Group Ocean View Condominiums Limited and that the land is to be consolidated with the purchaser's adjacent lands in exchange for payment to the city. Uh, oh, sorry. Right, so or if, sorry, consolidated with the purchase of Jason Land in exchange for, sorry, I've written it down slightly differently, but, uh, in exchange for payment to the city of the appraised value of the sec subject lands of $21,000, or if a second appraisal gives a higher price, that price be utilized and, and to be deposited by the city into Parkland Acquisition Reserve Fund for future acquisition of parklands. Thank you. Okay. The final word. Don't, don't worry, it's just a procedural question. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, so the, we're, we're going to basically have to have two votes here, one, one on the amendment and one on the actual. That's correct. Okay. Um, I think you guys have heard my piece. I've said enough. I think that the multifamily design guidelines are the way to do this. Um, I know the, the timing is unfortunate. Um, I mean, you guys have all made the points that I, I don't disagree with. We need to encourage seniors housing. We need to encourage more development. We need to encourage more housing in general. Um, I just, I really do not agree with the process in this instance. Um, so with that said, uh, I'll be voting against the amendment, but I'm still uh, in favor of the, of, the, uh, of the sale of land. Okay, so all those in favor of the amendment? Okay, motion's carried. Are any opposed? Motion's carried. And then uh, all those in favor of the motion on the floor as amended. And all opposed, motion's carried.